హలో ఎవరివన్ వీ వాంట్ టు అప్లై గాస్ లా అండ్ ఫైండ్ అవుట్ ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఫీల్డ్ ఇంటెన్సిటీ డ్యూ టు ఏ ఇన్ఫైనెట్లీ లాంగ్ నాన్ కండక్టింగ్ ఛార్జర్ స్పియర్ దట్ ఈస్ రిమైండ్ అవర్ సెల్ఫ్ వన్స్ అగైన్ వాట్ ఈస్ గాస్ లా ఈస్ అకార్డింగ్ టు గాస్ లా ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఫ్లెక్స్ ఈస్ లైన్ ఇంటిగ్రల్ ఆఫ్ ఈ డాట్ డిఎస్ ఈస్ వన్ బై ఎప్స్ లా నాట్ టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ టోటల్ ఛార్జ్ దట్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఇన్ దట్ క్లోజ్డ్ గాసియన్ సర్ఫేస్ now what's the scenario that we are having is we are having an infinitely long plane sheet though i am drawing a finite part we are actually having a infinite plane charged charged sheet and it's a non conducting sheet that means if i give a positive charge on one face it will stay on that face itself it's not going to be distributed to the other surface i want to calculate electric field due to this in a specified area so suppose i want to calculate for a particular surface area what i am supposed to do, uh, do is i shall draw a sphere a cylindrical part let the cylindrical part is having a radius r through this part only within that closed surface i want to calculate electric field intensity so i can uh, draw the diagram on the other side also which will go like this obviously i can draw another cylindrical part so it's as if like this cylindrical part is piercing through the sheet i want to calculate the electric field intensity due to this sheet within this uh, small region now we can see that within the cylindrical parts there are two parts one is the circular surface like we have seen earlier and another one is the curved surface of surface of that cylinder because the charge is a positive charge electric field intensity due to this charge at any point is always radially in a outward direction any point wherever you take electric field intensity is radially outward direction now let us consider a small surface area at a different parts say for example i have taken this at the curved surfaces a small surface area we know surface area's direction is always radially outward so it is very clear that at the curved surfaces e and ds are perpendicular to each other even if i consider a surface area here its direction is radially outward and the charge at that point is having electric field that is also radially outward and these two are perpendicular to each other so can i say at the curved surfaces at the curved surfaces electric flux is e d s cos 90 that's nothing but equal to zero there is no flux and we need not measure it and similarly let us consider at the circular surfaces let us consider the same values at the circular surfaces let us use some other color so that i can uh, show it clearly yeah this is the circular surface we know here also the surface area if i have considered a small surface area it is radially outward and the electric field is also radially outward so on the right side this e and ds are coming in the outward direction look at the left side the same the charges are positive so electric field is radially outward the small surface that we have taken that is also having a surface area radially in the outward direction so i would like to say get curved surfaces electric flux is e ds cos 0 so that's nothing but equal to e into ds of course integral of that i have to say so its value is nothing but equal to e integral of differentiation of s is nothing but equal to s you can say something like e into s where s is the surface area of a small element that we have taken into consideration at the surface area of that cylinder so if i have to write the total flux if i have to write the total flux what's the value of the total flux i can write is simply 
due to the outside flux on the left side flux is es due to the right side also this is es and if you notice carefully i am adding both of them why because both the fluxes are due to the positive charges flux due to a positive charge is radially outward in therefore the total flux is the summation of both the fluxes if one charge is positive and another charge is negative i could have been writing a plus and minus but both the charges are positive charges therefore both the flux is in the same direction now let's apply gas law applying gas law what is that gas law tells you is flux is total charge by epsilon naught so flux is nothing but 2 into electric field intensity into surface area charge but i don't know how much charge is there in the cylindrical part i need to calculate it how can i calculate that charge in the cylindrical part is total charge by total area multiplied by the area of the cylinder area of the cylindrical part that's the total charge that is there inside a cylindrical part and of course 1 by epsilon naught is there we can write total charge by total area as surface charge density and it is shown with a letter sigma at the area of the cylinder is something like s because we are talking it in terms of uh, s in the previous case here also let me call it like s yes. and by epsilon naught so 2 into e into s this is surface area of cylinder and this is also surface area of a cylinder why i am writing here like this is where total charge by total area is called surface charge density we need to use it in two dimension which is represented with the letter something like sigma now i can cancel this s and s yes. therefore i can say electric field intensity due to a non conducting wire is nothing but sigma by 2 epsilon naught thus using gas law we can find out electric field intensity quite easily right now we would like to continue the discussion rather than taking only one sheet into consideration let us consider two infinitely long positively charged sheets as shown in the diagram both are positively charged sheets infinitely long now there are three regions what is the electric intensity in this region in this region and in this region these are the three regions where i would like to calculate the electric field intensity so if i have to talk about say intensity electric field intensity is always radially in a outward direction so on the one side of the plate electric field intensity is like this on the other side of the field it will be like this even the same for this plate also it will be like this radially outward even for this also it is radially outward if i call this as e1 and if i call this as e2 so we can say the total flux in region 1 as well as region 3 both this e1 if i continue this e1 is radially outward if i continue this this e2 is also radially outward both of them are in the same direction so the e total is e1 plus e2 we have already calculated e total as sigma by 2 epsilon naught if we assume these two plates are different their linear charge densities or surface charge densities are different we have to write then sigma a by epsilon naught and sigma b by 2 epsilon naught whereas in the middle region in the region 2 e total is not the summation because here e1 is like this if you notice e1 is in outward direction 
beta is also in outward direction both of them are in the opposite direction so sigma a by 2 epsilon naught minus sigma b by 2 epsilon naught this is how we have to find out electric field intensity when the non conducting sheets are not one but there are multiple sheets are there so if i have taken say for example only one conducting sheet i have taken only one conducting sheet infinitely long one conducting sheet say this is the sheet that i am talking about when you say conducting sheet the charge is not going to reside on one surface rather it is going to go to the other surface of that sheet also now this one conducting sheet is again having three regions region 1 region 2 region 3 in region 3 electric field due to this side this charge is in outward direction in the region 3 due to the region 1 also electric field is in the same direction whereas similarly in region 1 field due to this is radially outward field due to this is also radially outward but if you carefully notice in between field due to both of this is in opposite direction so i can say in region 1 and 3 E total is equal to E1 plus E2. Of course, both are same because the sheet is same and charge density is same. So, I have tried to 2E. That is nothing but 2 sigma by 2 epsilon naught like this. Sigma A equal to sigma B here. So, sigma by epsilon naught. So, it is very clear that one conducting sheet is simply behaving like combination of two non-conducting sheets kept side one after other right similarly in region 2 i can write e is e1 minus e2 both of them are zero so there is no charge inside the conducting sheet that's why charge never resides inside a conducting sheet charge always comes to the surface charge comes to the surface but not inside a conducting shell or a conducting body but not inside this is in fact is a theorem called something like shell theorem people refer this is something like a shell theorem which tells you that a conducting body won't be having a free charge this inside the sphere inside the body rather comes to the surface of the particular body right we will continue this discussion further thank you